Hello, this is George Edmondson with MotionFeeFX.com. Did you know you can use M-Tracker Surface in the mesh mode to track an object like this? I'm gonna show you how to do it. On to the tutorial. To apply M-Tracker Surface, go to your effects, find M-Tracker Surface, click and drag onto the clip. Here we have our on-screen controls, and in this situation, we are using the mesh tracker on rigid surfaces. So we are going to change our mode to the mesh mode. Let's go back to our Bezier shape, and we will start clicking, and we are just going to click around and define the area that we are wanting to track. You can see that a mesh has been generated, we are going to go to our tracker and track forward since we are at the beginning of this clip. All right, now that that's done, let's check our track. And that looks pretty good. Our mesh is deforming appropriately for this mountainside. So now I would like to use M survival to draw a path. So I'm just going to click my trail and bring that down. And I'm going to bring that all the way down. In this situation, I'm going to turn off my animation in for now so that I can go ahead and define my path. All right, that looks pretty good. I also want to add a target maybe to the end of my path there so i am going to go ahead and drag this down so that we can make sure that it is set appropriately turn my animation in off for just a second set it here we can bring that down I'm going to turn my animation in back on we will set it about halfway turn my animation in back on on my trail I'm going to create a compound clip by highlighting both of these and clicking option G. Then let's go back to our clip that has been tracked. We will use our drop zone and we are just going to click at the beginning of this compound clip. Let's click apply clip. I will disable that top clip and then you can see that we have that trail following but it doesn't look quite right. This is because we need to change image insert mode. We're going to go to full screen. And then you can see that that path is now going to follow the area that we had defined. All right, that definitely looks pretty cool. There are a few things that we can do to make this look better. So we're going to go into our image effects. I would like to add a little bit of a blur. We're gonna bring that intensity down. We can add some motion blur as well, so that as the movement of the scene is moving around, we're gonna get some of that motion blur. We can add a tiny bit of grain since there is some natural grain in our scene. And then I've noticed that this area right here, I don't really love that. So I'm gonna go back in my compound clip and I can actually adjust that section if I would like in the compound clip, and then it is going to be reflected on our scene. I think that looks better. All right, so let's say I want to track a logo onto this mountainside. We're gonna do the similar process, M Tracker surface. We are going to change this to our mesh mode, and then we are just going to track this area here. Something like that. You can see our mesh and let's track forward. All right, let's take a look at that track. Now we need to populate our drop zone. So let's go and find the logo we are going to use. Apply clip. Of course, that logo is much too big. So over in our inspector, we can go to our pan and scale and we can scale that down just a bit and we could push that over on X, and there you go. Let's also change our settings blend mode to overlay. It's looking nice. We can go into our levels here, and we can adjust our black point 
lift that up just a bit, but let's push that sort of blue. And let's see how that looks. So you can see right here in this area that we start to lose some of that logo there. It's a very simple fix in this situation. We can go up to effect and change this to track. And then you'll see that that just comes right back in. So now we have our logo still there on the side of that rock. But what's really cool is how deformed and warped that looks where it really looks like that logo was just kind of painted on there onto the side of that mountain looking straight ahead and then you see it over to the side. Now, if we wanted, of course, we could add a little bit of blur. We'll bring that intensity down quite a bit. We can add some motion blur. And then if we wanted to open up our image distortion tools and we could use our brushes, bulge this just a little bit, just to make it look a little bit less perfect. All right, and we have got one more example that I wanted to show you in this situation. You can see that we are going to track an area and it is going to be covered up in the foreground. So let me show you how to do that. Apply M Tracker surface just like normal. We can go ahead and use our Bezier and draw the area that we are wanting to track. We can change this to the mesh tracker and let's track forward. All right, let's take a look how that is reacting. Yes, that is perfect. All right, so now we can go over to our drop zone and we can add our logo, apply clip, and let's go ahead and go to our image distortion tools by holding shift. We can scale that down appropriately. Maybe do a little bit of rotation and then let's open up our pinch and bulge tools. I'm going to bring that down to more of the pinch. Let's bring our brush size down a bit and we will just start to distort that logo. We will also use our move brush a bit just to get it kind of pushed down into the crevice there in the mountainside. Then we can go over to our settings. We can add a little bit of blur, bring that down. Then let's also change our blend mode to overlay. We can change some of the color. Let's bring this lift. Let's select a color here and we can just bring that up and let's see how that is responding to our rocks. So you can see that that is starting to kind of push out of the way. However, it's not exactly perfect. So in this situation, our changing it over to the track on the effect is not going to work. So when that happens, you can go and you can make keyframes and adjust that Bezier shape to appropriately move along with your rocks. So we can see here, we can go ahead and set a keyframe and then let's move forward. And we can just adjust those appropriately to move along with those rocks. And there you have it. Thank you so much for checking out this mesh tracking on rigid surfaces tutorial. We love to hear comments from you, so please drop a line in the comment section below and we would love to answer that. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.